FSR 3.1 is huge. Fake frames, I mean, <laughs> my bad. Frame generation could be the greatest innovation in game performance technology that we've ever seen. Frame generation is the idea that between frames that your PC works so hard to render, you can make an educated guess what goes in between them. And in the right conditions, you can get almost double the frame rate in your games without any noticeable cut to the responsiveness. In classic NVIDIA, they're on top of this frame generation stuff and they added it to DLSS 3.0 back in 2022. And they pretty much nailed frame generation right off the rip. And then classic AMD, they copied NVIDIA and added frame generation and called it FSR 3.0. But FSR 3.0, you know, you'd think, oh, it wouldn't be as good, but AMD also nailed it from the jump FSR 3 always looked very good. And then AMD brought something else to the table that Nvidia just did not. And it is the wide compatibility that FSR 3.0 offers with different brands of GPUs. You can use it on an AMD GPU, an Nvidia GPU, on an Intel GPU, whatever you use on your system, you can use FSR 3. While Nvidia restricts their frame generation technology to only their latest and greatest 40 series graphics cards, claiming that it can only be done because those cards have extra hardware on them that allows you to do frame generation. And yeah, that claim might be warranted, but Nvidia left their own GPUs in the dust. Their 30 series, their 20 series cards can't do frame generation because of this decision. When AMD clearly shows that they can get frame generation working on a wide availability of cards and at very high quality as well. But FSR 3 hasn't been without its flaws. And that's why FSR 3.1 exists, redefining frame generation technology and games and redefining storage with today's sponsor, Ugreen's DXP 4800, the most powerful NAS under $500. Network attached storage, that's what it stands for. It's basically an entire computer with a five core Intel 12th gen processor to connect to your network and put a ridiculous amount of storage in it. That easy. Plus you have the ability to add two high speed NVMe drives and upgrade your RAM on the system. Their all inclusive NAS app allows you to access your games, movies, photos, footage using local AI search. It's very fast to find things and automatically organize your files on any device anywhere all at high speeds using its 10 gigabit ethernet port plus you have a second one and if four bays is too much or too little for you ugreen is offering two bays all the way up to eight bays with their NASs, and you can get 40 percent off a ugreen nas with a five dollar deposit frankly it's a steal for such a high quality machine i say steal like it's almost steel i mean it's aluminum but check the link in the description if you're interested let's get back into it so here it is, AMD announced FSR 3.1 at GDC 2024. And I'm serious, like this can be the biggest innovation in frame generation tech. And that's because of one specific thing that was a major limiting factor. Now, it actually allows it to work with different upscalers. So FSR 3.1, is decoupling FSR3 upscaling from frame generation. Let's hop into a game to show you why this is important. All right, we're on the RTX 3060, as you can see in the top left corner of the screen, and we're at about high settings at 1440p native on, in Last of Us Part 1 here. And this game just recently got frame generation. Like I just noticed it was like literally like yesterday. So what's weird, is I can't just turn on FSR 3.0 frame generation on a 3060. Yes, FSR 3.0 frame generation is compatible with a 3060, unlike Nvidia restricting frame generation on DLSS 3. Yeah, you look in here and you can't turn it on until you turn on this here, which is FSR 3.0 native anti-aliasing. You have to have some form of FSR running in the game in order to use frame generation. And let's go ahead and turn that on. Clearly see that now I can click this button and press frame generation. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, at this point in time, FSR upscaling and anti-aliasing just simply doesn't look as good. Like if I'm looking at say Joel's head here in the middle, there's like this like shimmeriness around his head. You would probably prefer not to be using FSR 
anti-aliasing, especially when you're on a G B GPU that has, you know, like this 30 series graphics card does have DLSS super resolution available in it, which is kind of one of the reasons you buy an NVIDIA GPU. But if you want to use frame generation in a game with FSR3, you wouldn't be able to use DLSS with frame generation. Okay, I'm on the RTX 3060 and we're in Starfield here and you can clearly see that we're getting about like in the 40s of FPS, we're on medium settings, 1440p. And it's like, eh, I'd probably wanna turn on some upscaling in order to get some more performance out of this. See, we're at FSR 3 quality here. Like this particular look at the grass and stuff, at, like it just kind of looks a little mushed together in motion. Do you just see this? Like these little blades of grass, it just kind of looks, all mushed together and gross as I move around. Whereas DLSS does a better job of cleaning that up. You can see that there's literally just more blades of grass uh, like visible to you and it does not mush together nearly as much as FSR does. But if you want to use DLSS and you want to mix and match it with FSR frame generation, you just can't do it. It's grayed out. So FSR 3.1 frame generation is going to allow us to mix and match upscalers and frame generation, which is huge for every GPU that isn't an NVIDIA 40 series graphics card. So if your GPU doesn't have access to DLSS 3 frame generation from NVIDIA, which they made exclusive to, to 40 series graphics cards, now with FSR 3.1, you can mix and match. And it gives so much more potential to these cards that have been, you know, forced to be locked out of using DLSS frame generation when nvidia probably should have found a way to get frame gen working on their own cards but one of the huge perks of fsr 3.1 is going to be decoupling upscaling and frame generation then the next huge thing with fsr 3.1 the big update to fsr upscaling and image quality improvement and what they're claiming here is improved temporal stability at rest and in movement which we will look at which basically means less flickering or shimmering shimmering and fizziness around objects in motion and there's also ghosting reduction and better preservation of detail okay i'm in spider-man miles morales here on very high settings 1440p fsr 2.1 quality on right now i remember when this these games came out the remastered version of the spider-man games on pc that people were so happy that they included all of these different upscalers but i remember walking around with fsr 2.1 and just how bad it looked because look straight ahead it looks it looks fucking atrocious i'm just gonna say it do you see the the buildings as the vertical lines are you just see how they're basically just shaking and unsteady in the game and if we switch over to a different upscaler nvidia's uh dlss quality here the same resolution scale just a different upscaler and you can see that the image cleans up significantly because before on the other one that glass building up ahead that looked all shaky and weird all the windows look like they're crawling it just honestly looked uncomfortable like it looked gross you can also see with xcss quality that the temporal stability is so much better now what is temporal stability it's exactly what we're seeing is that temporal stands for over time so over time is the image stable fsr is not stable over time so that's one of the things that FSR 3.1 is supposed to be fixing is that temporal stability. Maybe it'll get more on the level of XCSS or, or DLSS and FSR won't be so far behind in terms of the upscaler. AMD said that they could fix ghosting. Let's check out a game that has really bad ghosting with FSR. Yeah, Remnant 2 does not look good with FSR, okay? Do you just see, I'm on FSR quality here on high settings, 1440p. Do you just see like the backpack literally looks just like it's glitching all over the place, especially in slow motion. I'm gonna slow it down for you guys. And then the shoulder pad too, also is kind of like all fissly and just weird looking. Like it literally looks gross. Whereas if we were to compare it to DLSS in this game, and I will say like DLSS, it's not perfect, but it does look a lot better than that. And the reason that these can have problems with ghosting is because these upscalers, they're temporal too, just like the temporal stability and stuff. It's actually taking into account different frames over time. And it's taking information from one frame or another frame and it's trying to compile it so that it looks you know, upscaled and, and good. That means you're taking into account information from other frames. Well, sometimes the detail from other frames get lost in this detail and that can cause ghosting. AMD's FSR implementation in this game, or this is probably one of the worst examples of ghosting in any game that I've seen. Just look how 
Oh, man. Especially the backpack. Oh, it's like glitching out. Ugh. It just seems like AMD's FSR upscaling needs so much work. And that's really what's been holding it back from NVIDIA is because it feels like if you go from an AMD GPU or you want to consider an AMD GPU over an NVIDIA GPU, one of the major compromises you're going to have to make is your upscaling in games is just not going to look as good. That sucks. I don't know what else to say, but AMD, I'm glad that they're working on their upscaling and supposedly going to be improving the quality, the image quality of FSR compared to DLSS and XCSS. It's it's huge ups there. All right, let's check out what AMD claims their, their improvements are gonna be with the upscaling. Okay, what AMD says is that FSR 3.1 quality improvement examples. Okay, I, that was not good English at all, man. I don't know what the heck I was saying. The first game that's being announced with AMD FSR 3.1, so the one we're gonna be looking out for as it comes out, is going to be Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart from Insomniac Games, Nixie Software, and Sony Interactive Entertainment. The game will feature all the goodness of FSR 3.1, including decoupling frame generation from upscaling so that can be used with other upscaling solutions that the game supports, and the improvements with FSR temporal upscaling image quality. So AMD says they're going to improve temporal stability. And on the left side here is FSR 2.2, so the older version of it, and on the right side is FSR 3.1. You can just see these are GIF images or videos, whatever the heck, I don't know. It's like the mix between a video and an image. You can just clearly see on the left side, it looks very flickery and unstable just over time here. It was on the right side, it looks a lot better. There's still some issues. Like I kind of see some here with the vines here and this little purple sign on the left side or this one here. Those look like those are some issues, but man, FSR 3.1 looks a lot more stable than FSR 2.2. It is night and day. Now, they could be cherry picking this stuff. We don't exactly know. Ra apparently, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart was a pretty bad example of FSR. Like it had, it just didn't look good compared to the, the DLSS or XCSS. They're also showing this, this little video here. And this is talking about ghosting reduction. Okay, I'm gonna hide my camera for this one. And on the left side, we're seeing FSR 2.2. And on the right side, we're seeing FSR 3.1. You can just see on the left side, it looks like garbled and gross as this little spinny thing is moving around. Everything looks blurry. And there's actually these like little like speckles around it. Like it is like noisy too. It looks gross. Like it literally looks gross. Whereas on the right side, you can make out this detail as this little thing, this little motor thing is spinning. Like you genuinely can see that it looks good. Again, this might be completely cherry picked we don't really know for sure but this is a very good sign that fsr could be greatly greatly improved with upscaling this could help them a lot this is something they've needed to do urgently for a while is improve fsr upscaling a lot because upscaling is just as we go into the future it seems like it's becoming more and more necessary for every game out there in order to get good performance in it. So this is super exciting to see. What AMD is saying here is that Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is gonna be getting FSR 3.1 and a game update coming later this year. I think Hardware and Box said that is gonna be coming within quarter two. So this is by June or late June, or I guess by July. There is another side to this. Yes, AMD is doing pretty amazing things here. Decoupling, FSR, upscaling, and frame generation is a huge deal. I will say that frame generation is amazing. And frame generation is possibly one of the best things to happen here because now AMD is allowing you to use frame generation on any card whenever you want, however you want. But you also need to take into account, and AMD mentions this, is that frame generation isn't perfect. It's not this magic bullet that's gonna solve all your issues. It's not gonna take your game from running at 20 FPS to running at 40 and being playable. It's not gonna save your cheap GPU. If you put shit into frame generation, you're going to get shit out. But if you put good shit in, then you're gonna get good shit out of frame generation. Actually really good shit out of frame generation. So frame generation is like a winning more type of thing. If you're already winning, you're gonna be getting even more out of it. But if you're losing, you're just, just you're still losing with frame generation. <laughs> is that AMD says it is highly recommended to always be running at a minimum of 60 FPS or about 60 FPS before frame generation is applied for optimal high quality gaming experience. 
So what they're recommending is getting you at least 60 FPS before you actually go and use frame generation within your game, which is one of the reasons why the upscaling being improved is so good. Because if you couldn't hit 60 FPS before, if you have high quality upscaling, say with the improvements that they're making to FSR 3.1, or because they're going to be decoupling FSR with frame generation and FSR without uh, with just upscaling, because now you could just use DLSS. So getting 60 FPS within your games is going to be a lot easier because of the upscaling solutions that they're doing with FSR 3 now. Upscaling is a great way in order to achieve that in a responsive way. And then at that point, you can use frame generation. It's just going to look even smoother. It's not going to save your, your cheap GPU that can't really pump out very good FPS or at very good settings. So take that into account. Frame generation is amazing, but it's not everything. FSR 3 is going to be added to tons of games. We saw here that Remnant 2 has it, Last of Us Part 1 now has it. There's also games down here like that are going to be getting it soon, like Cyberpunk, Dying Light 2, or I'm just kind of looking at games that I recognize here, Warhammer, or Naraka Blade Point. Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to have FSR 3.1, or 3.0. We'll have to see what version of FSR that they end up getting. Um, is FSR 3.1 going to be in these games, or is it just FSR 3? Because I really want to see more FSR 3.1 because this is this update. This update is absolutely huge, guys. FSR 3.1 is going to be huge. And that's because it's going to allow you to use any upscaler with frame generation to achieve the best image quality possible on whatever brand of GPU that you have. And AMD is also going to be greatly improving the upscaling. FSR, again, upscaling, it works on any brand of GPU too. So it's just great to have high quality upscaling on a bunch of different brands and i'm hyped i'm hyped for it see this image quality improvement i also i'm very hyped too for like handhelds and stuff like that you might be able to see it in the, the distance here you, you may or may not care but i did get a steam deck it's awesome the only thing is like in games when you have to do some upscaling, you have to use FSR in that game. Sometimes you can use XCSS, but that takes a little performance hit. So your best option is to use FSR. And if FSR just starts looking better, the Steam Deck is gonna be more and more viable. And I, I, I really like that. And again, just better is better. One of the major downsides AMD GPUs is they're upscaling and it's gonna be a lot better now. And they're not doing it with machine learning either. So maybe AMD was right. <laughs> All right, let me know what you think about it, though. Huge update. And you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.